What's up guys, Mitch from the DIYRecordingStudio.com and today we're going to be unboxing, you can all take a guess at what it is, DIYRE have been kind enough to send me one of their latest products for review. It is their latest Neve clone, the 73P, built for the 500 series. I'm super excited to open up this one and take a look, so let's get into it. So welcome back to the channel. And if you've been here for a while, you know that I've built products from DIY RE before. In particular, their OLA5 Opto Compressor. It's one of my favorite go-to compressors. It is an amazing workhorse compressor that I love using on sources that I want smooth compression on with that Opto flavor, but it also adds this nice high frequency sheen to things. And I've got another video coming on that real soon. I wanna revisit that compressor and do some videos on how I use that in the studio. So if you're keen for that, let me know in the comment sections down below. But today is all about their new product, the 73P, their first Neve clone. But that's enough waffling on from me. Let's get into the unboxing. Let's open it up. What's the rule? Always cut away from yourself. <laughs> no time for that. I always forget how heavy an Eve 1073 truly is. Flip this up the right way. Cool, typical DIY RE. Oh, nice. I don't know if I've had one of these before, an actual operation manual, a physical one, instead of just their online stuff. It's got the full schematics, block diagrams, all the stuff that you would find online. That's a really nice thing to add in. Awesome, cool. Now, this is what I absolutely love about DIY RE. They actually make the DIY process probably the easiest and most organized of any company. I've built a lot of DIY projects over the last few years from heaps of different companies. And whilst they're all great and they have their own way of giving you a kit that you can build, I think DIY RE are actually the most beginner friendly because they do stuff like this where they separate all of the components into numbered bags. And we'll have a look at them in a sec. Cool, so there's our main PCB board. Really great silk screen PCB, clearly labeled. It's gonna be really easy to build on that. There's our faceplate. Oh, and in here is the transformers. We'll get to them in a minute. They're really a special thing about the Neve. So we'll have a look at them in a second. Man, I need a sharper knife, I tell you. All right. So what they do is they give you all of these numbered bags. And what's super cool is that if you're new to DIY, it's really simple to follow. You go to bag one and you start the build process there, but it doesn't just end there. What they actually give you is two really important pieces of documentation online. They give you the full assembly guide where it has the tools you need, some sort of beginner friendly advice on things, how to bend resistors and sort them. They have this amazing identification thing for identifying each resistor if that's what you wanna do. I typically just use a multimeter and then they show you step-by-step step what to do. Place the resistors on the board from the first bag. All the parts will be located that you need in this one bag. All right, labeled one. So for all of step one, it'll match up to bag one. And like, that sounds simple and obvious to most people to do it that way, but not all DIY companies go through this much of a thorough kind of setup for how to take you step by step through the build. And then also a thorough sort of repackaging of all the products. Sometimes you get given all of the components and have to completely sort them yourself. And that's fine. Look, every company is gonna deliver these DIY kits to you in their own way. But I feel like DIY DIY RE are definitely the most beginner friendly for sure. Like without a doubt, big props to Peterson Goodwin and the rest of the crew. Awesome, awesome job once again with sorting those parts and making these kits really, really beginner friendly. Anyway, let's keep going with the unboxing. Bag two, there's a second section of resistors and capacitors and stuff. And you just follow those build instructions that I showed you before. Now, the other cool thing that DIY RE do is they give you an interactive build map that you can follow as well. So for instance, you can just click here 
and you can find where each of the components go. So what you can do is as you build the first components, say you, you feel like pretty confident with your build, you can literally just find the components in bag one and just start populating them. And then using this, you can actually tick them all off as you go to know that you haven't missed a component, which is really, really handy. Usually I do this on pieces of paper, like where I'll copy out the schematic or the bill of materials. But this means that you don't need to worry about any of that. You can kind of just go through and put where each of these components are. And it's just a really, really clever, thoughtful way to help people through the process. And also what I love about it is it helps you locate, especially when you get to resistors and smaller components like R18. Say you're on your PCB and you can't find where a certain resistor goes along here, like, cause it could be anywhere on that board. What's really cool is that if I go, all right, I can't find where R18 is. Well, I just click R18 and then I can see, oh, it's there next to this switch. And then I can find it on my board and go okay well it's next to this switch here r18 done and populate the board that way really handy stuff it's just really build friendly to have all the information laid out when you buy a diy re product you're getting not just awesome components and stuff you're getting all of those instructions and the quality of the separation of all the components and then the quality of the build guide as well so besides all the resistors and stuff the core kind of things we want to maybe look at is this amazing heat sink and power output regulator transistor setup here that's going to be a really interesting thing peterson goodwin has said is this is integral to the sound of the original neves so this will be an interesting component in the build we've got the faithful gray hill switches for our red marconi knob which is like the neve thing you need to have that here it is here the red marconi knob and then a great little gray knob there too to match that neve kind of output trim knob and they've even put in i can see here a small screwdriver for doing part of the work i'm going to assume that's for the knobs that's awesome i already have these kind of tools obviously but if you're new to building that tool might come in really handy if you don't have a small screwdriver like that and then what else have we got component wise a bunch of really great capacitors and stuff in there and some headers another daughter board in this one with some switches so they're the main components there you've got your main board as well as all the little daughter boards that are in there then we've got our metal chassis which is nice and rugged i love this I'm all right, it's really good to have a nice sturdy chassis to mount your PCB to, but yeah, pretty standard anyway. And then this is probably the most exciting part of the build if you're new to building Neve style preamps. If you want your Neve equipment to sound like a real Neve, there's definitely a component that you can't do without. Two components, I should say, and they weigh a ton. They're so crucial to the Neve kind of sound. We'll find out what that's for later, another little daughter board. But what you have here is the, this is the blue Carnhill input transformer. If you've ever looked online for the internal components in a Neve 1073, you will see Carnhill input transformer and Carnhill output transformer. This thing's massive, like fits in the palm of my hand, but it's really heavy, really weighty. That is, the kind of components that are integral to the Neve sound. There's lots of debates online how important these transformers are to the sound. Plenty of companies that use their own versions of these kind of things, but I would say it's better to be using the real input and output transformer. Rupert Neve himself famously said that his designs relied on the tonality of his transformer designs. He felt that that was integral to the sound that he got was his usage of the input and output transformers. So that's it for today's quick unboxing of the DIY RE73P. Now, if you've got any questions about this build, I'll be doing a step-by-step -step build like I've done before on this channel of this product. Stay tuned for that. Make sure you hit like and subscribe. And if you do have any issues with your own build, you can reach out to Peterson and the team at DIY RE and they will help you out with any issues. You can also also, sometimes I get people reaching out to me as well. If you want some quick advice because you've come across these videos and you want some help, you can either message me in the comment section down below or 
email me at mitch at the DIY recording studio.com. Make sure that you guys hit like and subscribe and don't miss out on the full step-by-step -step build video series that I'm going to be releasing next week of the DIY RE73P Neve clone for the 500 series. It's going to be a really, really exciting build. I'm super stoked to be able to build an amazing product from DIY RE again. So once again, thanks to Peterson and the team. I'm Mitch from the DIY recording studio.com. I'll catch you soon. Thank you.